Today's show, we're going to be talking about one player that the Detroit Lions drafted this past season that I think is going to have an impact for this football team and deserves a little bit more talk about what he's going to be doing for the Lions in this role. That's what this video is about, giving a little bit of spotlight to this player, what I think he can do for the Lions in 2024. Before we do that, rate the Detroit Lions draft class, A being the best, F being butt cheeks. Let's get this thing started. Folks, you're going to need to get used to this name, Mr. Sione Vaki, the Lions' fourth-round pick this past season. Now, he played college, safety, running back, special teams. He's an all-do-it type of player. But what his niche is is soft hands, and he's really good in the pass game. We've seen that in OTAs and minicamp. And Ben Johnson's going to have a lot of fun tinkering with him to use him for specific plays this season. You look at the Detroit Lions draft class, we talk about Tyrion Arnold, of course, because he's the future number one corner, first round pick, and it's Rakestraw. We know he's going to develop this year, and he's going to be an important starter for the Lions You know, going forward after this season. Giovanni Manua, developmental tackle, who's going to help the Lions. Sionavaki, who we're talking about right now. Mikai Wingo, who's going to be an edge rusher, and Christian Mahogany, who I do believe is going to be the future guard for this football team. Sionivaki, though, he's going to be going against the running back room. That's where we got to watch. That's where he's going to be. He's going to be a running back for the Lions. So he's going up Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery. We know those guys are set. It's Sionivaki versus Craig Reynolds. Who is going to be the number three running back? Sionivaki's already made the team. I really think that that's the case right now. It's just depending now, where is he going to be? RB3, RB4. But in all honesty, to keep it 100, it does not matter really what position he is in because of his skill set that he's going to bring to the Lions. Before we talk about that, though, in the 2023 season for him this year, for a a wide receiver slash running back, we're going to do the the receptions here, 42 receptions, 317 yards, an average of 18.5 and two touchdowns. This guy is a, a playmaker that gets it done offensively. You can play running back, you play wide receiver. Keep the name, and you can recognize this style by Theo Riddick. That is my comparison to Mr. Sione Vaki, uh, a running back who's really good with his hands. And again, He's going to beat out Zonovan Knight, Jamar Jefferson, Jake Funk. That's a foregone conclusion. It's just where is he going to be? And I'm going to tell you why I don't care if he's RB1 or RB4. Because Sione Vaki's skill set, for me, what he's really good at and what what makes him outstanding in this this realm is passing, is being a running back catching the ball out of the backfield. Now, we know what Jameer Gibbs brings. That's something that he does. Dave Montgomery does a little bit of that. But Craig Reynolds, he's more of an all-around back. He's good at a little bit of everything. He's not an expert, though. He's not great, like extremely awesome in the pass game. He's just really solid. And so when you have a skill like Sony Vaku, who's more of the pass threat, I don't think it really matters if he's going to be RB4 or RB3. He's going to be utilized in the game's anyways. Now, he's not the biggest guy in the world. We're at 5'11", 213 pounds. He's a player that's played offense and defense. We didn't really know when we drafted him, but we heard in OTAs and minicamp, the importance about Vaki is how impressive he was in the pass game and on special teams. So he brings a double asset to this football team, and I think right now he's already going to be the special teams ace. I think that's, again, a foregone conclusion. He's immediately going to be making an impact for the Detroit Lions. Besides special teams, what else is he really good at? What is his uh, his specific niche that he brings? He has great hands in the pass game. We talked about this guy literally has theoretic type of hands. He can catch the ball, and he's going to be an asset, especially if Jared Goff's looking to check down. We know he can do that, especially, you know, in some of these downs. He checks down to Sony Vaki, the guy who's fast, speed, with great hands. It's like having a lesser Jameer Gibbs in the pass game. And that's outstanding. And I think it is going to help having him out there with the release, uh, or not the release, but Josh Reynolds no longer being here. And again, 
You look what his attributes are. He's a 4.62 in the 40-yard dash. He was 45th speed score of 92.2, very fast burst score of 129.7, 83rd in the NFL. Pretty good stats, well, pretty good attributes at least for a player who is more of a, you know, a fourth round pick like we've seen. He's a, that's what he is. He's a fourth round pick. And so we're seeing that I feel like he, we drafted him perfectly where he was at, but it absolutely, it could have been a situation where the Detroit Lions were, they could have lost out on him, right? So they got him in the fourth round. What it, what else is he really good at? And this is a Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes attribute. He is one tough SOB. He could take a pounding. He's got grit. He's got the determination. He deals with injuries. He gets banged up. Multi-universal. He is tough mentally and physically to be able to play running back, basically wide receiver, special teams, and safety. You got to be smart. This man is absolutely that. And he's tough to be able to do all these positions throughout a college season. And lastly, for what I think he also offers the office, special teams, and defense. Three values. Now, look, we don't think he's going to be on defense, but he's played it. So that is experience. Universal player that's going to give the Lions something that they can go against in other teams that is a little bit of a trick. So question for you, how many catches will Sione Vaki have this season? If you don't think he gets any, put zero. If you think he gets 100 like crazy, which I don't believe, put in 100. But just put in the amount of catches you think he is going to to do. And look, not everything is pretty of Mr. Vaki. Nope, not everything. There are weaknesses to his game, and every rookie and every player has weaknesses to the game. So the question is, what is, you know, what is his weaknesses? What are his strengths? What what did he do um, that you feel like that he needs to get a little bit better at? Well, this is just size. That's a weakness, right? He's not the biggest guy in the world. Just not the biggest arm length in the world. Who cares, right? I look predominantly on the tape. So his physical attributes may not be the biggest. Doesn't matter. Khalif Raymond's not a gigantic player, right? So Monroe St. Brown's not a big player. You can have players out there that's making a difference that's not, you know, the, the prototypical. Tackling, wow. A guy who's going to be playing offense... His tackling's not the greatest. Well, you don't really have to tackle a whole lot unless you're playing defense. This is from his defensive tape. So, look, I guess if we get a turnover, he, he you know, and we're running back to get it, maybe, maybe he needs to work on that. But tackling is a weakness. Guess what? That is for defense. What is another weakness? Man-to-man coverage. He's not playing defense, folks. This guy's going to be offense. So his weaknesses are defense. And I guess that you can use him in a pinch at safety if, like, everybody was gone, right? But his weaknesses are physical and defensive. We get a guy that's playing offense, and it doesn't really matter on the size when you're a running back. It's it's a less of a factor, if you ask me, when it comes to that. Now, what did he do, you know, this past year compared to his 2022 season? Well, he didn't do anything in 2022. Zero. Yes, he was in games. He wasn't playing. So he goes from nothing to 42 receptions, 317 yards, 18.5 average, and two touchdowns. To me, that is quick learning and showing a significant process from nothing to that. Not a lot of tape on him, but that's okay. That's why he fell to the fourth round. That's why I feel like we're getting a sleeper pick here from uh, some Vaki. Because he's not the biggest name out there. You know, we've talked about the draft picks that we've had. And we've named, and we've, we spoke about a lot of them throughout this offseason. But Vaki just brings a unique talent to the Detroit Lions offense that we're not talking much about. And I do believe he's got the hands of a theoretic. Now, look, I don't know how many touches he's going to get in a game, I do think he's going to be in game plans and he's going to be on set downs. And that's important for Vaki. He may not be the biggest impact player, but he's going to 
make an impact, and that's why I'm talking about him right now. So I got a question for you. Name a player who you think is underrated on this football team. Here, I'm doing Vaki for the draft. Maybe you think there's another player, Khalif Raymond, who is a veteran. Was a draft? He's underrated. Give me your name in the comments below. Let's continue on here and talk about what Brentley Wiseman spoke about Sony Vaki for um, his draft analysis pre-draft. Sony Vaki is a versatile chess piece who can contribute on offense, defense, and special teams, but likely won't be an impact player in any phases of the game. That's what he said now, right? He is a versatile chess piece, but for an impact, he's thinking maybe, oh, you know, Sony Vaki's not going to be the impact like a number one running back or number two. Yeah, I totally get that because I don't think that's what he's going to be at all. I think he's a utility knife. I think he has a special set of skills, just like the movie Taken, and you utilize those special skills on the passing down and give him the ball in space. I think that's what it is. Or if it's a third down and six, you can put a Jameer Gibbs and Vaki in the, in the same, on the same down, right? Who are you going to pass it to if you're, you're thinking of the run game? Because he can play the slot, too. So there's a lot of options for the Detroit Lions this year offensively to get this man going. So, again, question for you. How many catches do you believe Vaki is going to have in 2024? Zero if you think he's just going to be sitting on the bench. Maybe you think 20. Maybe it's just a, a little bit throughout the season. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Vaki. We're dropping videos every single day. It's epic. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest Detroit Lions news and rumors here on Lions Talk by Chat Sports. So you don't miss out. Hit it right now. With that said, folks, adios.